If you'd like to make an extra $100,000 this year, then this video is going to be for you. I'm gonna share everything I've learned in the exact step-by-step -step system to make this kind of money online and create a profitable business. And essentially what I would do if I was completely starting over today, the exact systems that I would use, the steps I would take, and everything I would do to get back to about $100,000 a year, I'm gonna have that monthly recurring revenue coming in. Even if you've never made money online before, you can use the system to start freelancing and doing services, and start making money pretty quickly. And that's why the first step is gonna be choosing a service and growing high value skills because there's different ways to make money online, affiliate marketing, e-commerce, online education. But when you're consulting and doing freelancing and doing a service, you can start offering that right away, getting clients and making money. And you want to sign on a service that you could offer either to local businesses in your area or remotely just to any company in the world because there's something that you're probably an expert about or you're passionate about or you can learn it. You can learn any kind of high value skill and then offer that to clients. I personally done a lot of copywriting and digital marketing. That's pretty much what my entire career has been. But when I was freelancing, I was mostly writing copy and advertisements and content for my clients. And that's why I recommend it's a good place to start. It's something you can learn. I have free and paid courses you can check out in the description on that. But you can also do things like web design, programming and app development, social media marketing, email marketing, any kind of digital skill or something you can offer to businesses and do it right from home and do it remotely. And something I want you to think about too is stacking your skills vertically. So that means you have your main skill. So in my case, it was copywriting, but I also knew how to do web design, um, email marketing, search engine optimization, video editing, scheduling. I know how to use AI automation. And so what would happen all the time for me is I'd get a copywriting client and I'd be writing their website, let's say. But then afterwards I could upsell them on a monthly content writing retainer, doing social media marketing and management, helping them set up HubSpot and different tools, uh, connect them, do integrations and automation. And suddenly that one project turns into monthly recurring revenue and maybe tens of thousands of dollars over the long term. So decide on a skill that you're passionate about and maybe you have right now. If not, there is something you can learn. There's so many courses and things on the internet. You can learn any skill for pretty much free or investing a little bit of your money. And then again, stack it vertically. You're gonna learn different skills along the way, but learn things that are adjacent to it that you can offer to your clients, but also you can use for your own business. So search engine optimization. I use that for my brand, YouTube videos I make, I've done podcasting. All these different skills have allowed me to offer more value to my clients, but also just grow my own business. So think about it that way. Your kind of main core service and then other skills you can learn along the way. Now, secondly is knowing your numbers. So you wanna think about how much you'll be charging for your services based on your experience and your value. You can look at similar businesses and freelancers and then also average rates in the industry as a benchmark. So for example, if you're copywriting and you're brand new, maybe you charge $25 an hour. And then as you grow your portfolio and you get clients, you're more confident and you have case studies and results, you can start upping your rates and how much you charge. And as well, what doesn't get measured doesn't get done. Remember that. So if you're trying to hit $100,000, you need to calculate how much you need to make every month to hit that mark. So for example, let's say you have a $1,500 a month package or that's how much you make on your average client. You'd probably need five to six client retainers every month to achieve that. So it's actually not that outrageous or out there to get some clients maybe on a marketing retainer where you're doing social media management, content writing, SEO, things like that, or again, whatever service you're offering, and then you get five to six clients or so, and suddenly you're making about $8,000 a month or $100,000 a year. So I really want you to know your numbers and calculate that. Try to figure out some packages and services you can offer, how much you're charging for that, and then reverse engineer it because then you know exactly how many clients you need, how to set up your business and your marketing. And it's all about just knowing your numbers and having these kind of um, operations and data and things like that in place. It's really, really important. So we have the service that we're doing, kind of vertical uh, skills we can stack with that. We know our numbers, we know the math on it. Now what I want you to do is master cold outreach. Back you know, years ago when I was doing uh, freelancing full-time was my main focus, cold email was the number one way I got clients. And I got so many clients and jobs and opportunities doing this. It's just the best way as a service provider to get clients and very fast too. And that's kind of the whole system is that we're doing a service, we're doing outreach, and we're getting work pretty quickly. So um, Hunter.io and Apollo.io, these are great tools. I've recommended them a million times, but they work so well and they're so robust. And I remember when I was first starting out and doing a lot of cold outreach and things like that, and even though I had it working in a good system, back then years ago, there wasn't as much AI, there wasn't much uh, of these features that we have today to do AI and automate things. So like nowadays in 2024 and beyond, if you're doing freelancing, you're doing services, you have no excuse not to invest in AI and these automation, these platforms, to get more clients and grow your business. Like starting now is one of the best times to do it ever. And the idea is too with cold emailing is we wanna target specific companies and then specific decision makers in those companies. So let's just say for example, you want to work with uh, law firms, for example, okay? So inside Hunter or Apollo, you can essentially filter it by keywords, locations, things like that. 
So you might add like a law firm keyword, let's say. You can even filter it by company size and things like that. We go into those different companies and we find people like the director of marketing, people that would be the gatekeeper uh, behind hiring someone like you. Again, I have a marketing background, that's what I was doing. So of course I'm speaking to somebody related to marketing and in charge of that, but maybe it's like the chief technology officer, the CTO, if you're doing web design or maybe like app development, right? So think about the service you're offering and then who inside the company would be in charge of that. And then we wanna reach out to them directly and you can find that very easily in these platforms. But with cold outreach, success is in the follow-up. Rarely are you ever gonna book a meeting or get a client off of one email. It's happened to me like several times over the years, but 80% of it was following up. And again, inside these platforms, you can automate the cold email uh, outreach and then all the follow-ups. And they have AI in there to write the follow-up scripts for you. And then you can send them and automate it every couple of days, there's a follow-up. And why this is, is when you think about you're reaching out to like a director or head of marketing, people like this, they're busy people, right? They're managing teams and big budgets and things like that. They might be actually interested in your email and your pitch, but they're just so busy, they, they can't get back to you. So when you actually start sending, you know, two, three, four follow-ups, that's typically when you're gonna get a response. Even if it's a yes or a no, whatever it is, or a maybe, just reaching out on a regular basis after that original message is really where you're gonna actually secure the meeting and get your results. So make sure that you're automating that and you're saving a lot of time and you're following up on a regular basis. And again, going back to the numbers too. So let's say it took you like 100 emails to get a client. Well, if you send about 10 targeted pitches per day, that's about 300 per month, let's say, it would probably take you a good like three, four months to actually get enough clients to be making $100,000 a year. So it's not outrageous. It will take probably a few months if you're really working on it and you're serious and you're hitting it every single day and you're doing it how you're spo uh, supposed to, but it's gonna add up and you're gonna get that money. And even if you only hit $100,000 a year, maybe you're making $50,000 a year on the side of your job or while you're studying or something, that's amazing. And it all comes from just doing the cold emailing, following up, automating it, and writing the really good uh, pitches and scripts. And one thing I want you to think about too is personalization. This is really truly probably the heart of good cold emailing and where a lot of people go wrong. And some people do kind of the shotgun approach. They just send out like thousands of cold emails and it's such high volume in a numbers game that of course they're gonna get some clients out of that. But instead you can work smarter, not harder. And what I would do, for example, back in the days, I'd find a company I wanted to work with and I would just kind of research their website and their business. I'd find something interesting about them and I would include that in the cold email. And the beauty behind that is it shows you're putting in some extra effort and extra steps and that alone will probably get you a response. And I remember I got so many clients that said, you're pretty much the only cold email that we've ever responded to in the history of this company just because you put in some effort and we saw you actually cared and you know put in that extra a little bit of energy in those steps. So for example, I'd find a company and I'd say, you know, hey Susan, congratulations on making it on the, the Inc. 5000 list. That's an amazing achievement. Or, you know, hey, I saw you have 100,000 visitors uh, per month on SEM Rush. That's a, a great achievement for SEO and content marketing. So just take a little bit of extra energy, like a couple minutes really, per lead, per person that you're pitching, and then just find something you can comment on about them, include that in your pitch, and trust me, it's gonna be really, really good. So also use the person's first name, use their company name, and when you're in these different tools as well, you can pull these in directly with the automation, so it fills it in, uh, which is really amazing. But the personalization in terms of like the little observation and things you have to make, you'll have to pull that manually and include it, but again, just a few targeted pitches per day that can really add up and get you some good results. And then after that is creating SOPs or standard operating procedures, essentially systems that you can use in an onboarding process because we chose our service, we're doing cold outreach, we have our numbers, everything's set. Now you're actually gonna start booking meetings and getting clients, but you have to know how to handle that, right? You have to have a system in place. So some things I'd be thinking about is having a set of questions you can ask clients when you have a discovery call. So when you have that first meeting with them, like asking you know, about their business, their competitors, their offering, what their budget is, their timeline, their wants and needs, things like that, and it helps you understand their business and if you can work together. Um, having a process for onboarding them as well and actually executing your service. So maybe after um, you have a discovery call, you give them a quote. If they say yes to that, you uh, send over a contract. You can find plenty of like free contract templates for free on Google and then just kind of fill in the blank, you know, edit it for you know, each project and client. And then things like uh, DocHub is pretty good for actually sending out the uh, agreement getting it signed digitally, and then you both have that copy. And I'd also recommend using like a free invoicing software, Stripe, PayPal, you can sign up for these, no problem. And then having a way to have consistent communication. So maybe like every one or two weeks, you have a Zoom call, but in between then it's established that you're talking on Slack or maybe uh, email or phone, whatever it is, but you have some way to update them and kind of stay in touch. And something I've noticed with running an agency and doing freelancing, is that like 80% of this just customer service and then communication. Like if you're doing a good job at the service, they're gonna be happy, but keeping them updated is giving them that peace of mind and that confidence that, because they're spending their hard earned money on you and their budget, but having that communication 
just gives them that kind of peace of mind and confidence that they can trust you and you're doing good work. So make sure to have really good communication and just have a channel again, like Slack, email, whatever it is to stay updated, give them consistent updates and then have a bigger meeting, like maybe every one to two weeks. But when you map out these systems, these processes, when you do have a call and get you on board that client, everything's really smooth. It makes you look more professional too. And it makes everything just easier for everybody involved. Now, the other thing I want to talk about that's so important is creating a personal brand. Like I've gotten so many of my biggest clients, job opportunities, business opportunities, just meeting incredible people too, because of my brand without lifting a finger. Like I have so much content out there. I have my website, my YouTube, so many opportunities come to me organically without lifting a finger. And you can have that too. And the first thing I would do though, create a website. You can use card. Uh, I believe they have a free plan to create like a landing page. WordPress is good, a little bit more technical, but it's worthwhile learning. Square, uh, Squarespace, Wix, Weebly, all these have different kind of like free plans or paid plans they can use. Again, you want to spend money to make money. So if you want to really take this seriously, spend a little bit of money. It's not huge to have like website hosting, get a professional domain, professional email. It'll really help you out, especially with the cold emailing and, you know, makes you look more professional. And I've noticed too, it definitely increases like the uh, amount of meetings you get in your response rate. And then on your website or your landing page, you'd have things like a service page, a home page, contact page, an about page, uh, maybe a blog too for posting content. And then that brings me to the point of publishing content. So you need to be posting content on the internet. Things are so competitive nowadays. They're just like so busy. There's so many things out there. You wanna be posting content maybe on YouTube here, maybe a podcast with Audacity or OBS. You can post blogs on your WordPress website, LinkedIn, medium.com is free, or just posting content on social media. And you can use canva.com to create nice graphics and reels and videos. And then also you wanna think about when you're creating content, you wanna to target topics and keywords that your clients would be typing in and looking up. So going back to copywriting, right? You can create content around what is copywriting, how does copywriting work, how to hire a copywriter, how to write a website, how to write a sales page. Think about the questions and the pain points your target audience would have and then create content around that because it creates authority and thought leadership uh, and credibility, but also it creates that traffic and awareness and brings your ideal clients to you. And over time, that really compounds. We have a brand that just brings everything to you. You can retire from cold outreach and cold emailing because everything's just coming inbound organically. It's amazing and it does take some time to build that up, but do the cold emailing kind of in between. And once you build up your brand further enough, you won't have to do cold emailing or anything like that ever again. Now, if you want to learn more about this and just kind of creating your dream lifestyle, unlocking a lot of success with your health, your income, your mindset, I have the Transformation Academy below in the description you can check out. For less than 20 bucks a month, you get 10 plus courses on self-development, business, and more. Access to the private Discord community, uh, coaching and mentorship from me in there, and tons more. So you can check that out. If there's anything else like related to this video you'd want to know, just let me know down in the comments or a future video you'd like me to make. Hope you're having an awesome week and I'll catch you in the next video.